What a joy it is to be in his presence. What a joy it is to be in your presence. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord, amen. There is nothing like being in his presence and there's nothing like being amongst the body of believers. Thank you, Dr. Davis, the music ministry team, Mr. Kaba, everyone that has a part to play in, in ushering in the presence of the Lord. I am altogether destroyed before you this morning. I am going to do the best I can to rely wholeheartedly upon the Holy Spirit this morning because my heart is just so stirred. It's just so stirred. And I want to let you sit down. So if you have a Bible, if you want to open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to drop down to verse 16. Uh, I'll read these scriptures into your hearing. We'll pray. I'll let you sit down. And then I just pray that the Holy Spirit would just continue to move. There is nothing like being in his presence, church. I'm so grateful for all the study. I'm so grateful for all the teaching. I'm so grateful for all the accolades and the diplomas and the doctorates and the degrees and all of the education and all of the things that we can do with the word of God. But there is nothing like the anointing of the Holy Spirit and his presence. And his presence is with us this morning, church. Let us not take this for granted. His presence is with us. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 says, So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away. Our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are are eternal. And I want to talk to you this morning from the thought, new you, new you. Hashtag day by day. Let's pray. Father, I feel so ill-equipped <laughs> to be where I am this morning, but I am so grateful for the person, the presence, the power, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit that can take any vessel, fill it up, and use it, not for the good of man, but for the good of your people and for the glory of your namesake. And so, Father, I just pray that you would do this special holy work this morning, God, that you would touch this frail, broken, foolish vessel and help me to minister life, truth, and love in a way that is pleasing unto you as our heavenly father, edifying unto the body and honest to the word that you have laid upon our hearts this morning. Father, I pray that you would touch every heart, every mind, every soul, every spirit in this room this morning, that your word would go forth with power, conviction, boldness, and authority, and that it would find good, fertile soil in the hearts of men, women, and even children. Lord, we love you today. We thank you today. We give you glory today, and we pray that you would help us to take advantage of this opportunity that we have to commune with your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. We thank you for it, and all God's people said together, amen. amen. You may be seated. I am so grateful for my church. I don't know why, but just this morning I stand before you just reminded of how grateful I am to be a part of this church, to be a member of this church, to sit under the leadership of this church. Bishop Harold and Dr. Marion Spellman are responsible for probably the restoration, the salvation, the ministry to thousands of lives. I mean, untold numbers of people, men, women, and children will find their way into heaven as a direct result of what Peniel is doing and as a direct result of a seed that was planted in their hearts some 44 years years ago. You can praise the Lord for that. Amen. It is a good thing to be grateful for. Um, I am reminded of this because yesterday was an incredibly special day that maybe everyone in this room should know about, but maybe we just lost sight of. Yesterday was October the 7th. That date might mean something to you. It means a whole lot to me. October the 7th, 1979 is the day that my pastor gave his heart to the Lord. I remember that date. Honestly, I think I know pastor's salvation date better than I know my own date uh, because he preaches about it. He talks about it. He shares about it. He speaks about it. And he brags about it every single chance that he gets. I'm half tempted just to share my testimony this morning just because God is so good and there's nothing like recounting what he has done in our lives. Amen. That's a message in and of itself. 
44 years this man has been walking with the Lord and preaching the gospel for I don't know how many years of those 44. And so I just wanted to step back just for a moment just to say, if you're watching Pastor, and I know that you are, we honor you today. We honor you today, man of God. We honor you today. We honor Dr. Spellman today. We honor you today. I just... I, we honor you today. Thank the Lord. I am so overwhelmed. I mean, I just think about the, the physical and spiritual and emotional blood, sweat, and tears that this couple has just laid on the altar of God for these 40 some odd years. How they have ministered to countless thousands of people that the world would just flick into the ash pan of society. But no, they reached down into those gutters and said, I don't care where you are. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what you're struggling struggling with, God can save your life. And I, uh, I have never used a hard drug in my life, but I am a direct recipient of the ministry of Peniel. I have had my life changed and preserved as a result of what God does right here at this ministry. And that started 40 some odd years ago when Dr. Spellman and Pastor Spellman gave not just their lives to the Lord, but their everything to God and said, this is what I have, you do with it what you will. And that is what you see before you now today is all of this. That miracle is not lost on me. Um, and I just want to try to preach this morning about being a new you, about how you need a new you. And I just can't help but think about how Peniel is responsible for so many new yous over those years. I thank the Lord to be before you this morning. Let me do my, let me do my ministerial duties. Excuse me. I thank the Lord for being before you this morning. Uh, let me give honor to my pastors if I haven't already. Let me give honor to my assistant pastor, Dr. Henry Davis, who is just an incredible man of God. I honor him today. He is a man. Yes, I honor him today because I honor him today. I honor him today. He is a man that knows how to both lead and follow in the most significant and admirable way. I have learned so much about leadership from him, but I've learned so much about what it means to carry the briefcase for the people that you love as well. Um, he does such an excellent job of that. I want to honor my wife today. Um, I just want to say to my wife, uh, we may not be perfect, but we are perfect for each other. And I am just so grateful for you. Uh, I am so grateful to be behind this desk this morning. Let me get into the word here because I could stand here all day and just honor so many countless people. I'm so glad for folks that are with us this morning that are visiting, the folks that are with us this morning that are regulars, folks that are with us this morning that are stalwarts of this church. I thank you. Um, this text that I want to speak to you from this morning is maybe one of the most precious texts in the Bible to me. God has used this text for me personally to minister to me in times of my greatest despair. Um, I believe uh, that it is is one of those texts that you should commit to memory. I believe it is one of those texts that you should study, that you should know, and that you should consider on a regular basis. Um, I want to talk to you this morning about how God can make anyone a new you, about how we are all in the process of being made new for the rest of our lives. This is not something that happens once at an altar. It does. There are many of us that have been delivered from, from different things at an altar in a moment, in a split second like that. God does work like that. I know that to be true. God delivered me from alcohol in a moment. The day that I got saved, June 27th, 2004, was the last day, well, the night before that, was the last time that I ever drank, I didn't drink that day, was the last time that I ever drank a drop of alcohol. God just delivered me from that. I went to church, got saved, went home that day, and poured an entire bottle of liquor down a drain and never drank another drop of alcohol. God does that. He does miraculous things in our lives in moments like that all the time. He does it. He does it. 
He does it. He can deliver you from anger in a moment. He can deliver you from sin in a moment. He can deliver you from hardships and hang-ups and all sorts of bondages and baggages in a moment. He can do that, but he also has this process that he works in our lives, this discipleship process that pastor loves to preach about, that loves to uh, talk about, that he loves to speak about, that he loves to teach about, because God is more concerned with your future than he is with your past or maybe even your present. And we get so stuck on those two things. So I want to encourage us this morning not to lose heart. God is making you a new you. And this is a process that he has begun from the moment that you gave your heart to him. And he will never finish this process. Until you enter into glory, he will continue to make you a new you. And this happens day by day by day by day. And that's why Paul says here, do not lose heart heart because you are in the midst of this process it's one of the antidotes to not losing heart is recognizing that you are becoming new God is speaking into your future and he is preparing you for what he has for you in that future we have to be able to accept the new we spend so much time, far too much time, energy and attention on our present circumstances and our past circumstances. We miss what God has for us because we will not focus on the new that he is doing in our lives. Jesus once told a powerful member of the Sanhedrin, some of you may know this guy. Jesus once told a powerful member of the Sanhedrin, one of the most respected Pharisees and revered Pharisees of his day, that he must be born again, again to see the kingdom of God. Jesus said this to a Pharisee, that he must start over and become new. A man that had been walking with the Lord, or so he thought, for years, for decades, who had taught the law, who had taught about God for years and for decades. A man that was considered, that he was considered one of the most revered Pharisees of his day. And if you don't know, I'm talking about Nicodemus. He looked that man straight in his eyes and he said, you must be born again. You must be made new. You must give your heart to the Lord. You must be transformed. Are you hearing me? That would be like me walking up to the, the preacher who's been preaching for 30 years and trying to remind him that you must be born again. You must be made new. You must be transformed. And you know what? That's what I'm saying to you today. If you've been walking with the Lord for five minutes or 50 years, you must give your heart to the Lord again and again and again and again and again. You must be made new. Your outer self is wasting away. It's dying. I don't like to be morbid, but it is wasting away. I'm struggling right now with some arthritis issues in my left ankle that are making it hard for me to even stand behind this desk this morning. Because my body is wasting away. But my inner self, the part that really controls what's happening, the part that really is in charge, the part of me that really says no, 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 no. You are not going to call Dr. Davis this morning. You are not going to tell him you can't go this morning. You are not going to call anyone this morning and ask them to fill in for you or to step in for you because your ankles throb in a little bit because it's hurting a little bit and you're concerned about standing for 30, 40, 50, I don't know, maybe 60 minutes. We'll see how things go here. No way, son of God. No way, man of God. No way, son of the ministry. Because you've got work to do. Are you hearing me? Your outer self is wasting away. But guess what? The anointing of God is so powerful, so strong, so mighty, and so able to renew our inner selves that that pain can just fade into the background, even if only for a moment. Are you hearing me? God's mind is to prepare us for the future that he is preparing for us. God's mind is to prepare us for the future that he is preparing for us. We think so much about what may God do or God may give us or how he might change us, but the main thing that he's working on is you. 
Yes, I pray, God, help us, provide for us, bless us, bring all sorts of things into this church, into our lives individually, into our families, provide for our needs, give us, go above and beyond and beyond measure, more than we can ask, think, or even imagine. But really the prayer, the main prayer, the main issue, the main thing that God is working on is you. Yes, he may want to give you a new house. Yes, he may want to give you a new car. Yes, Elder Scott, he may even want to give you new clothes and new shoes and new glasses and a new tie and a new pocket square and a new vest and a new shirt and new trousers and new suits and all of those things. God wants to give us these new things, but the main thing that God wants to give you is a new you. And sometimes we miss it. We fight our new you. We fear our new you. We tire of the, the work that it takes to develop into this new you. We tire of it. We tire of things that it requires, the discipleship journey, the accountability process, the interaction with God, coming to the altar, reading the word, engaging with the body of Christ, coming to church, listening to the word, standing in the gap for our loved ones. We tire of all of these things, but all of these things are contributing to the new you. You are being renewed, being made new every day, this text says. It says day by day, renewal, 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 renewal. And what, is this, what does this have? What other effect does this have? It causes you not to lose heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you're still trying to live on yesterday's provision, if you're still trying to live as yesterday's man or yesterday's woman, if you're still trying to live in yesterday's anointing and yesterday's help and yesterday's ability, you are missing what God is doing today. Day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We do not lose heart. Our outer self is wasting away, but our inner self is being renewed day by day. Your outer self refers to anything that is related to your body, including your flesh, blood, blood bone, skin, all of it. It is wasting away. Your worldly practical knowledge, forgive me, but it is wasting away. I know this because I'm helping a sixth grader and an eighth grader with their homework every day. And if you're helping your children with your homework, you recognize how knowledge, how even helpful good knowledge can just waste away. Because I am trying to do long division with decimal points and fractions with these people, and it is all I can do to keep my wits about me. Amen. Yes, I got an amen over here from the coop. They know. It's all I can do. That, that outer self, that flesh and blood, it's wasting away. These ankles are giving out, and I don't care. My vision gets worse every year. I can, wow. My vision gets worse every year. I don't care. I'm praying, God, yes, heal me. Keep me, protect me, protect my body. Don't get me wrong. I pray those things. I pray for relief. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance. Don't hear me the wrong way, but I'm not fooled. This is just a shell. This is not what I need to be renewed every day. This is just some suitcase that carries my soul and my spirit around until God would call me home into that glorious, glorious presence. Pray for your loved ones that are sick. Pray for your loved ones that are not well. Pray for yourself when you're going through pain and hardship and difficulty. Please continue to pray for yourself, but be reminded whether God lifts that burden or not, you are still renewed day by day by day by day by day. Your inner self is renewed day by day. This is your soul, your spirit, your essential life. This is who you really are, who God made you to be, his intentions for you, his purposes for you, his destiny for you. It's all wrapped up in this inner self that Paul is talking about here in 2 Corinthians. This is the reason that the body can experience all sorts of hardship, disease, distress, sickness, shortcomings of all shape and size, but the inner self 
The suke, that's the soul. It's a got a determined destiny that can still carry on. And I think about my pastors. I think about Pastor Spellman and Dr. Spellman who are longing, who are praying, who are believing God that this work would carry on for decades, for centuries beyond their lives. Are you following me? And I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I just want to say I am so grateful for Dr. Spellman and Pastor Spellman and for the way that they have invested into this ministry so that when they are called home to glory some 40, 50, 60 years from now, whenever that is, that I keep praying that they would just live forever, that they would just live forever, that they would just live forever. But I know that's not the truth, but the truth is this work will continue because even though that outer self is wasting away, their inner selves are being renewed. The destiny of Penile continues. What this work was meant to do continues. And I know that pleases Dr. Spellman. I know that pleases Pastor Spellman. And I know that pleases God. He is a generational God. He is looking for the torchbearer, the standard bearer in your family that's going to carry it for your family for the next generation. We need to pass on to our children the torch and the standard that God has so they can carry it to the next generation. We need to take this seriously. We need to take this very seriously. And this is, this is what God does when he renews. It means the cause to grow up, to be remade, to receive new strength and vigor. And it means to be changed into a new kind of life, kind of like being born again. This is the real you that is being made new day by day. That is what is necessary, is a new you. And the reason why is because earlier in this text, Paul talks about it. We have this treasure in jars of clay. Fragile, fragile jars of clay that were never meant to be permanent containers for the glory of God. Fragile jars of clay. Again, I don't want to get off on a tangent or be morbid this morning, but I'm just reminded today of how brief, how fleeting life can be. How precious these moments are. And we just walk through the world as though we've got all the time in the world to do all the things that we want to do. And we get so stuck on frustrations and shortcomings and misgivings and things that we want and things even that we need that we miss sometimes, I think, what God is doing all around us. How he's molding us into new men and women of God. How he's shaping us into the mothers and fathers and husbands and wives that he would have us to be. And where do we get this from? Where does this come from? It comes from communion with God. Relationship with God. Finding our ultimate satisfaction in God. The truth is we are always changing. This is how the day by day works. The you you need for what's coming down the pike is in this book. It's at this altar. It's coming across this desk. Are you following me? And what I mean by this is the you you are now, hear me. This might come as a warning. This might come as a shock. But hear me. The you you are now is not equipped to handle what God has for you. We need to get busy, church. We need to get busy, men. We need to get busy, women. Are you hearing me? The you you are now is not equipped to handle what God has for you. I think about who I was six years ago. 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I got saved, I think, 19 years ago now, a long time ago. Well, for me, it feels like a long time. And the you that I was then is not equipped to handle the wife and the children that I have now. And I mean that with all sincerity. That man was so immature, so foolish, so impetuous. Are you hearing me? We need to really give pause to give some serious thought to where God might take us in the next year. Hear me. Hear me, please. I pray you hear me where God might take you in the next year. Are you equipped for that? Think about that. Think about that. Think long and hard about that. And I know I'm speaking to specific individuals this morning just for this moment. But hear me. Think about that. Are you equipped for where God has for you in the next year yet? If not, you better be running. I mean racing. I mean jumping over chairs, tackling. Don't know. Don't do that. But getting to this altar every chance you get. Are you hearing me? Because you've got stuff coming down the pike. Are you hearing me? Man, woman of God, father, husband, wife, mother, the you you are now is not equipped for what God has for you. But you have this chance. You have this chance to be renewed 
day by day by day that you might be equipped for what God has for you. Even, even as short as a year ago, who, who I was a year ago was not equipped for what God has for me today. I mean, just, just the simplest thing, the filing system that was in my office a year ago, it was not able to withstand the files that are coming through my office today. Hear me, I know that sounds so silly and so trivial, but it's, so, it's such a good example. Just something as simple as that. The leadership abilities that I had one year ago are not, e not equipped enough for the leadership that I need today. This is what it means that God renews you day by day by day by day because the outer self is wasting away, but the inner self, the strength, the spiritual strength, the knowledge that you have, the biblical acumen that you have is being renewed day by day by day. Because where God is taking you, you need him every moment and every day. That's why Jesus told us to pray, give us this day, what? Our daily bread. Because it sustains you for a day. That's the picture of the manna in the Old Testament. God's provision sustains us for the moment that he's carrying us in. And then he gives us extra sustainment, more sustaining in the moments that he's carrying us to. But he always provides. But we can get so stuck on where we are now that we miss out on where God is taking us to and the new you that you need to be to be who you need to be in that moment. I know that's a confusing sentence. But the you you need is being developed. It's being formed into the image of God right now. And you must be willing to die to self so that God can make you new. And so my last point this morning is how does God do this? What, how, in what way does God do this? And I'm going to be honest with you. You're probably not going to like me for this. But I want to tell you the truth because I love you. This text says, verse 16, we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. God uses light momentary affliction to prepare for us an eternal weight of glory. And Paul is such a masterful author here. He contrasts light with weight, and he contrasts momentary with eternal. Everything that we're going through, every struggle that we're facing, every hardship, every trial, every disappointment, every difficulty, everything that we're going through. And Paul is not minimizing it here. Paul has been through more than probably all of us in this room, perhaps, but he calls them light and he calls them momentary in comparison with the eternal weight of glory that God can provide for us. God uses light, momentary affliction because he knows it's the main thing that drives us to communion with him, which is the thing that he wants more than anything. He wants us to spend time in his presence. He wants us to commune with him. He wants us to sup with him. He wants us to have relationship with him. He wants us to be with him around these altars, in the altars in our home, through his word, through prayer, through church services, through times of praise, through times of worship. He wants us to be with him. That is why he sent his one and only begotten son into this world so that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. And where do you spend that eternal life? You spend it in eternity with God. He sent his son to ransom a lost, broken, dying world so that we can be with him in eternity, with him for all eternity in glory. That's the point of all of this is so that God can rescue us and bring us back to him. That's what he longs to do. That's what he wants to do. And that is what he does. And he does this, amen, through light, momentary affliction because he knows it's the thing that drives us to our knees to get into his presence, to recognize our need for him, and to recognize our desire to spend that time with him. The things that are seen, worldly things, are transient. The things that are unseen are eternal. The old you just won't do. You need a new you that is being conformed into the image of his son. The problem is we think we need more worldly things. We think we need more money to solve our problems. We think we need more time to solve our problems. We think we need more resources to solve our problems. A new job, a new marriage, a new relationship, more friends, a promotion, a new car, a new house. We think all these things will solve our problems. These are things that are wasting away. They are worldly, transient.
transient things. What you need is a new you. You need to be renewed day by day and conformed into the image of God. You need to be willing to die to self, to let go of the flesh, the comfort, the habits that have held on to you for so long so that God can make you new and properly prepare you for what he has prepared for you. You need a you new, a new you, excuse me. The you you need to survive tomorrow is being made today. Jesus said it like this, you must be born again. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is the start. If you don't know God, if you've walked away from God, if you've separated yourself from relationship with God, I would say to you this morning, you must be born again. You must be born again. You need a new you. This isn't you 2.0. This isn't you plus Jesus. This isn't you plus a little bit of skill sets or some discipleship. This is a brand new you. That's what this text says. It's being renewed. Your inner self needs to be renewed day by day. Day. If you have been walking with the Lord and you recognize this morning, not because of something that I said, but because of something I pray the Holy Spirit is saying to you, that you're not where you could be with God because you have not committed to this daily renew, I want you to be encouraged though. Uh, God says, the word says in Isaiah 41, it says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the God that we serve. Not only does he give us the command, he gives us the provision. He says, you've got to be new every day. He recognizes how challenging that'll be. Because that's why he says, do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. I recognize it. I recognize it. There are some of us that are going through difficult challenges every single day. I know some of us, our mind is playing tricks on us every single day. Day. I know some of us, the circumstances swirling around us are enough to try to lead us into depression every single day. I know some of us, the provision that we need that hasn't come yet is tearing us and wearing us down every single day. I know some of us are dealing with hurts, hangups, and old past issues every single day. Day. I know some of us are dealing with, with things that have been done to us, wrongs that have committed to us, crimes even that have been committed against us that the devil tries to torment us with in our minds or our souls or our remembrance every single day. I know some of us are dealing with temptations and driving forces that seek to want to just peel us away from God, away from the flock of God, even away from this program and lead us out into a cold, broken, evil, awful world every single day. And I want you to know this morning before you leave this place, you serve a God that doesn't just command you not to lose heart. He doesn't just say to you, don't lose heart. He doesn't just say to you, don't lose heart. He doesn't just say to you, just keep trying or keep doing harder or keep just holding on harder or faster. He doesn't say that. But what he does say is recognize your outer self is wasting away. But you know what? That's okay because your inner self, hear me, the part that can overcome those trials, the part of you that can overcome those circumstances, circumstances, the part of you that can fight back that temptation when it comes in a moment and you feel so weak, that part of you that feels like these thoughts that are running through your mind will never end and they'll never stop and they'll torment you forever. That part of you that the devil would try to use to his advantage to try to hook you, to try to claw you, to try to draw you away from God. I want you to know this morning, before you leave this room this morning, that part of you, God can reach down into that part of you right before you lose heart and he can renew it day by day by day day by day by day. He does this work in our lives. So the command is do not lose heart. The promise is you're being renewed day by day. The answer is how do you do it? You look not to the things that are seen. 
And I'll close with this. You look not to the things that are seen. You look not to the worldly things that are seen. You look not to flesh and blood. The conflict may still remain. Are you hearing me? The difficulty may still remain. The pain may still remain. The frustration may still remain. The distress and the temptation may still remain. But don't look at it. Don't look at the things that are seen. Don't look at the things that are seen. Don't look at this world that you can see. You look to the things that are unseen. You look to God, you look to his word, you look to the Holy Spirit, you look to your comforter and your guide and your power and your friend and your helper. Because even though he's not seen, the things that are seen are transient. That means they're not going to last forever. And I know this is a hard word to receive when you are going through difficult times. But hear me this morning, they are not going to last forever. That pain won't last forever. That temptation will not last forever. And I mean, this I'm, I mean this across the holy board. That temptation won't last forever. That hardship won't last forever. That thing that you have that causes you to not listen to other people, that stubbornness, it doesn't have to last forever. That thing that separates you from your wife having better relationship, it doesn't last forever. These things that are seen all of these circumstances, all of these challenges, all of these trials, all of these depressions, all of these oppressions are transient. They do not last forever. The thing that lasts forever is the things that are unseen. These are the things that are eternal. The love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, his work in our lives. These are the things that are eternal. And when you commit yourself to not just being better, but to surrendering to the process of saying, God, you can make me new every single day. He will carry you to where he intends you to be. He will strengthen you. That's what Isaiah says. He will help you. He will uphold you. He will carry you with his righteous right hand. But you've got to be willing to lay down. That's what Jesus said. You must. He said this to Nicodemus. No offense, but this is like me saying this to Dr. Davis. And I don't say this to embarrass him. I say this to honor him and to honor God. This man is getting ready to celebrate his 70. You don't mind if I share that, do you? His seven, yeah, you don't, mind, I, you don't mind if I share it, right? His 75th. I was giving you all five. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I didn't, yeah. 75th birthday at the end of this month. He's getting ready to celebrate his 75th birthday at the end of this month. I don't know how many untold years walking with the Lord, but his 75th natural birthday at the end of this month. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus himself, would still look him, Paul, would look him dead in his eyes and say, you need to be renewed every single day. And I say that with all due respect. Because I know I need to be renewed every single day. And I think we not only fight against this in some ways because it can feel embarrassing perhaps or shameful. But that's the devil. The Lord himself told us that we need to pray for our daily bread. If you need to repent every day, every hour, every minute, if you're a husband, you should just do it. Just practice it. Because if you're not doing it, you ought to be doing it, bro. If you're a father, I'm just speaking to us men because we, we know we need to repent. Men, we need to repent we can get so stubborn, so locked in to what I know to be true. And this text says you need to be, you're out, it's wasting away. Your inner self is being renewed day by day. Stand with me if you would, please. I am so overwhelmed emotionally, spiritually, just in so many different ways. Um, just before we close, I just have to say, um, 
Some of those songs that Dr. Davis ministered this morning have such a special place in my heart. That album, if you want to, I mean, I, we call it an album because it is a record of, of songs, but it's more like an anthology of praise. When I think about that album for the rest of, our, our, for the rest of my days, that was the f- one of the first Christian albums that I ever got my hands on. Because when I got saved, I didn't know what good music was. And I remember I had some third day albums for some reason that somebody I think gave me and then I had for the rest of my days. And uh, man, I wore that CD out. I could probably tell you like the track numbers, not just the names. Like I found God, that song I found God, that's number six on that album, I guarantee it. I know it for a fact because I can remember putting it in on my little CD player all the time. Lord, you're the one. I think it's number 12 or 13. It's at the end of the album. And Majesty. The song that, one of the songs that we ministered this morning, that is a song that I would just pray, play on repeat in my prayer time. And God met me in those moments in such powerful ways. I will never forget it. I can remember being in my sister's attic in her apartment. That was where I was staying at for that time. And God just ministered. He just moved and he just ministered. I just share all that by way of just reminding us that even after 19 years, we still need these holy moments with God. We never should tire of desiring, seeking out, fighting for, going after these holy moments with God. And I say this maybe as just an admonition to myself. I can get so caught up in reading the word, studying the word, being a minister, preparing messages, and trying to put things together and getting ready for this thing and that thing and all those things that you can just miss what it's like to just just bask in his presence and just allow him to make you new. Sometimes he makes us new through his word. Right? Some of the things we need we get through his word. But some of the things that we need, I I think we can only get through his presence. And that's why we always keep these altars open. Even during the praise and worship service, you're never out of order. If you need to come down here and you need to speak to the Lord, you come down here and you speak to the Lord. We want these altars to always be open because it's a reminder that we have access to his presence. I'm grateful for his word. I'm grateful for the access that I have to his word. I'm grateful for fellowship, the access that I have to fellowship. I have great Christian men in my life that speak into my life that correct me often. I'm grateful for those things. I'm grateful for my leadership who helps me, teaches me, guides me. I'm grateful for books that I've read. I'm grateful for all kinds of admonitions and instructions that I've gotten. But nothing has changed my life like the presence of the living God. That's the thing, I believe, that makes us new every day, day by day by day. So I want to invite you in a moment to step into that presence in a more profound way by coming to the altar. We're in his presence now, but I want to encourage us to take advantage of that. There's nothing like being able to say, Lord, this flesh wants me to sit in the seat. I'm going to drag it down to this altar anyways because I want my spirit to be renewed. And if you need to make your seat an altar, that's fine. You can do that too. Don't hear me the wrong way. But there is something about bringing your flesh under subjection. So if you would, just bow your heads. We're going we're gonna to assimilate here first. If you would, bow your heads and close your eyes. Um, I want to encourage you to repeat this prayer after me, if you would. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Anoint me to believe, accept, confess, obey, and understand that which I have heard. In Jesus' name. And now with every head bowed and every eyes closed, before we move on, I just want to give an opportunity. If you're here this morning and you recognize that you, this new you thing is not you, and you're still dealing with the old you, you've never given your heart to the Lord, you know you need to be saved, you know you need to dedicate your life to the Lord, you know you need to lay down all of the weight and the sin that does so easily beset you and start to begin to look unto Jesus. Maybe for the first time, if you've never given your heart to the Lord, I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. I never want to leave this place without giving you a chance to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. So if that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand just so that we can pray for you appropriately. Nobody looking around. I don't want to give you this opportunity to give your life to the Lord. There is nothing better you can do with your life than to give it to Jesus. I promise you. 
And if you're here this morning, see those hands. If you're here this morning and you want to rededicate, you recognize that you're not the you you need to be. You're not the you that you know you need for whatever's coming down the pipe. If that's you and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, my hand is up. I want to encourage you to raise your hand as well. We're going to pray together here. I see those hands. Thank you, Lord. We need you, Lord. So grateful we always have this opportunity. I never want to take it for granted. So let's pray together. Um, if, even if you didn't raise your hand, would you just pray along with us in support of those that did? Uh, let's just pray this prayer. Repeat after me. Uh, Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save my soul. I receive you and I claim you as my Savior and my Lord. Thank you for making me new. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. I want to open these altars. Yeah, you can praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. I praise the Lord right along with you.